Okay, I am ready. <gasps> Me too. Welcome to <laughs> episode 32 of the Guardian Project Podcast. I'm your host, Andy. Um, and I had a great time at pre-release this past weekend for Theros Beyond Death. I had some really sick pulls. I opened a foil dream trawler and a constellation clothes. The pulls were so sick that I came down with the flu and only got to go to one of the pre-releases. <laughs> yeah, pretty sick pulls. Uh, and I'm your co-host, Mike Coyle. And did you know that Kess, Descendant Mage's favorite snack, is cheese-filled pretzels? <laughs> you can't have Kess without combos. <laughs> <laughs> Please listen carefully. This is a podcast where we talk about all things Magic together, especially Commander. What is on the agenda today? Uh, today we are going to talk about, since we've already talked about all the Theros gods, we're going to circle back to Theros and talk about the non-gods and the non-titans because we covered the titans too. The legendaries, other cards we think are going to have implications in Commander. Uh, two weeks ago, I was tasked or challenged with coming up with a list of planeswalkers that would be problematic as commanders with uh, one of Andy's points of saying he wishes planeswalkers would be legal as commanders. Still stand by that. With a few exceptions. Yes, yes. Um, and we finally got our first piece of mail. Mailbag. Here's the mail. I'm not singing that. It, I'm not going to sing it. It never fails, though. No, it, but it does make me want to wag my tail. When it comes, you want to wail. Don't finish it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we're going to finish the episode out with Commander of the Week. It's my turn this week. I wonder what kind of commander we could be talking about post Theros Beyond Death release. Maybe it relates to enchantments. It probably relates to enchantments. It sure does. So, pre release. Andy, I didn't get a chance to go to any pre releases. I know, but I did get a lot of video, so we are going to make a video for it. Um, I know Ryan told me that I had to get a lot of B-roll, so I have a few hours of it this time. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I think this time we have enough. Um, I won one whole game. Out of? I played three matches. Okay. So six, six oh, games. Game, not match. Game. Games. I made. Oof. I played three matches. I played six games. No, I played nine games. Nine. No, I played eight games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So I, but no. No, you no, played an odd right. number of games. I played an odd number of games. Yeah. In my first match, I lost zero and two. The second one, I lost zero and two, and the third one, I lost one two. Yeah. Yeah. I did win a game though in my third. Match. <laughs> I lost. Green white was really good and sealed. Yeah. And everybody seemed to be opening up either Heliod or Anissa. Mm. And the one, the one four reach constellation creature, it's ridiculous. Just a one four that has constellation when an enchantment enters, you gain two life. I, I couldn't, oh. I couldn't compete with that. I just didn't have anything big enough in the air to get around that. Gotcha. Dream Trawler would have been great seven turns earlier every <laughs> every game. <laughs> I did play against um, a deck that had two, um the Acroan Wars oh, and yeah. an Uro and played all of them in the same game. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, your deck's great. I mean, I don't know if any of this belongs together. And they no. said this, they were like, I don't think it does, <laughs> <laughs> but it's working, <laughs> but it's doing it. Yeah. No. Um, I had a lot of fun. I think, so I opened up, yeah, like I said, I opened up a, a foil dream trawler and I got the constellation Clothis, which is cool. Um, one of the, one of the um, gods that I actually wanted. I don't know if I can really use it in Commander. Um, we talked about it. It seems yeah. like it. I mean, it's probably just an irritant sitting out there. Sure, it, like belongs in like a god tribal deck. Well, I don't something. even know if it does belong in that. Just because if you can exile one card from any of your opponent's graveyards, it deals two to them. Yeah, to each opponent. Yeah. So it might be irritating enough. Yeah. That so you put it in like a like a a group thug deck or yeah, something. If you yeah. have a group thug deck that runs green. Or or if you just want to throw it into a deck. Just, just put it in the deck. And someone looks at you and you like, well, what's that card for? That, it's a card that I put in. Yeah, this is, I have a lot of cards. I do, like, like, I do like when you when you see somebody playing and they play a card and you're like, that doesn't belong in there. And they go, yeah, but it's messing with you, isn't it? Like, yeah, you're right. It really is. I did not expect that at all. 
<laughs> so I heard that uh, this particular pre-release was seeing a lot of like stalemates and going to time and stuff. And I guess that yeah. that one four reach that you gain two life that could well, have something to do with it. I also though I also know when to concede. I mean, I'm not conceding True. easily mm-hmm. and and or 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 too soon, right? Um, but. There are many times when you when you look and you go, eh, you know, there is literally no way that this person is coming out of us. And just concede and go to your next game. Right. I mean, um, I don't think slow play was an issue. I do think there that there's a lot of mucked up board states. Yeah. Um I never went to time, but I did get to five minutes before they when they said five minutes left. And and so um, but we had just finished right. whatever game that was. But I think in the first round there were twelve 12 pairs that went to time wow it was i mean That's i think it went lot. over by like a half hour because people were also then thinking really hard on their turns oh, it was yeah. like well we need to go faster and they mm-hmm. had two judges working that event they had they had like 58 people or something like that at that wow. release i mean they were that That's was awesome. the most they could be at or something yeah they were like, well, if the fire marshal comes in we're gonna have an issue because <laughs> i don't think we can have any more than this in here anyway <laughs> Um, they to turn people away at the door. Right. Um, but no, I liked it. I had a lot of fun. So I opened, like I said, um, I, I opened some fun stuff. I, we brought home some, some pre-release kits as well. And in <laughs> the one that I brought home for Nikki opened up three of the, um, the green God, um, Nylea, Nylea three in the same pre-release kit. Two that were non non constellation, and then one that was a foil and a constellation, mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and two of them were in the same pack. <laughs> he was like, "Well, I guess I'm playing green, and I guess I'm not winning because I can't turn her on. Like I couldn't. He couldn't get the constellation up. Oh, because gotcha. he had he had enough creatures, but when we played, I had enough removal. But that was um. I there were a lot of pre-release kits where there were a lot of double gods. Yeah. Did and, he did he actually play all three of them in the same deck? Nylias. I don't know if you, I I would have. I don't know if I would cuz you can't play more than one of them. Why not? Because they're legendary. I know. I no, <laughs> my my argument is why not? Oh, okay. <laughs> cuz there are exile target enchantments. Yeah. I guess I say I don't I don't I didn't get to play purely so I don't know what the yeah, what it looked like in CL. But no, but I liked it. I would I I wish I had been able to go to more. Gotcha. But you know, flu. You got flu. The flu gotcha. <laughs> but at least it didn't do 20 damage to you. You're still alive. No, it definitely did. No, you're alive. No, it, it's got infect. Oh, you're on game three. No, <laughs> you're at nine infect we're at with nine, 20 life. We're at nine infect <laughs> with 20 life right now. Full life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next thing on our list to talk about is the Theros Beyond Death cards that we think are going to have an impact in Commander or... Yeah, no, that are going to have an impact in Commander that aren't the gods or the titans that we talked about um, last week and two weeks ago. So, you know my favorite. We mentioned it. Uh huh. It's is Demir. It's Atris, uh, Oracle of Half Lies. No, Half Truths. Half Lies. <laughs> That's what I named my deck. Uh, I did post um, kind of a preliminary deck on Twitter uh, for Atros, Atris, Oracle of Half Truths. Uh, mini factor fiction, uh, three two menace when he enters the battlefield. Um, you you an opponent target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library, and makes two piles one face down one face up. You put one in your hand, the other going in the graveyard. So I built a reanimator deck. I played him. this in sealed. Mm-hmm. I've 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 drafted. I no I put yeah sealed. So I played two sealed events on arena, and I got Atrus in one of them. And um, every time I take the pile of two that's face down and every time it's two lands and you know what, it's going to one day it won't be two lands, what? but I, I haven't seen well, it one yet. day. It'll be three lands <laughs> all in one pile. Um, so yeah, Atris is actually probably my favorite card uh, revealed, even though I do really like Ashiok nightmare muse too. And I heard that is a absolute bomb in limited. Uh, nightmare muse the fact that it can just create its own protection by plussing um, i mean exiling uh, two cards from a 40 card deck is already really really strong and you just do that by blocking and attacking with the three two that you just get for plussing ashiak yeah that seems really really strong um so i'm hoping to pick up a copy i know the price for that card is going up a bit um so 
those those are probably my two favorite Demir cards going on right now. Um, but there's also going to be a lot of um, deck forming around some of these other staples. Um, I don't know if you found a spot in any of your decks for Dryad of uh, Elysian Grove, but no. I mean, not not yet. I I haven't. I mean, I have a five color commander deck. Okay. So I mean, I guess it would fit in there, but I haven't. I don't think I have the need for that card yet. Gotcha. I I also didn't know if I needed. I mean, yeah, I don't know if I need that. It's a great card. It's a great card so, because then you can, you can. Your bases can tap for any color mana. It's it's all of your all of your lands count as every basic type. Every basic land type. So I guess all lands can tap. I mean, it's not bad. It's so prismatic omen is the enchantment. This is prismatic omen on a creature. Yeah, prismatic omen is like a thirty dollar card or something mm-hmm. like that. So it's actually mm-hmm. kind of nice to have this, especially on a creature. It's much more fetchable than an enchantment. Um, there are implications for. Uh, cabal coffers you know running cabal coffers in more than just a one color more than a mono black or a two color deck um kind of you can fetch for this instead of urborg and then all your lands i didn't think are about swamps. that that's nice uh valakit so all your lands are mountains yeah there's a lot of i mean and and you know cabal coffers is this, is an edh implication and valakit maybe is more of a modern implication but you could run it as one of your win cons and golos or something like that yeah it's it just seems like it's going to open up a lot of of those lands matter type things and then help people with fixing you know it's it's i think elysian i think dryad is sitting at like 11 or 12 dollars right now so it only costs 3 mana and yeah it's just oh that's probably one of my favorite green cards one of my favorite probably second favorite green card from this set yeah Cause mono you're ta- green cuz you're talking about the triple your mana um, as your favorite no 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 nix bloom yeah you can let's just move to that one next <laughs> so uh it's nix bloom and i always forget the last word in the name of the card is it just dryad nix bloom ancient nix bloom ancient for green 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 five five trample elemental enchantment creature that says if you tap a permanent for mana, it produces th- 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 three times <laughs> as much mana yeah. as it normally would produce. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Soul Ring taps for six. But it also costs so much mana. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I don't mind creatures that cost a ton of mana. I'm cheating them out anyways. The first, I mean, you know me. I I try to spike a card whenever I see it. Uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> and the first thing that I thought of was, you know, I remember when I used to have a Marin deck, and I could just reanimate Nyx Bloom Ancient to the battlefield, and then my Cabal Coffers, when it taps for black mana, taps for three times as much black mana as it did before. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Or And again, like all the artifacts that you could play, and maybe with this thing in it, maybe you're not playing an artifact deck, but um, what about... Uh, Elder Fay Grove Elder Fay Grove no Fay Burrow Fay Burrow Elder. If you're if it's tapping if it's tapping for, for Wooberg, it's tapping for triple Wooberg. Yeah, so fifteen mana on one creature. I yeah. mean, it it the fact that it says permanent and not land is absolutely ridiculous, and that's why it is just and it's and it has trample too on top of it in case you just want to swing with your five five. It's not legendary, so you can't have it as your commander, which is probably a good thing, but. You can have multiple of them out. You can make copies. Your lands can be tapping for like a million. So you can make a million, one million, one millions. A million, million, millions. Yeah. I did get to do that once. You did. Now you can do it even more times. Even more times. (laughs) Um, Can I? I want to talk about it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, Siona, captain of the, the... Pileus, Pileus. Which one's this? Okay, so for uh, it's a two-two human soldier for one green and a white. Oh, yeah. Um, when Siona, captain of the Pileus, enters the battlefield, look at the top seven cards of your library. You can reveal an aura and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. Mm-hmm. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, you can create a one-one. Well, not you can. It's you create a one-one mm-hmm. uh, human soldier creature token. So. Um, 
it's it's a green white combo deck which well, I don't think we see very many of. I, I would argue that Captain Sisse is the original true. green-white combo deck. But there are so many cards that, that work well with this, even if it's not infinite. There are some... There are. I mean, there's infinite cards. There is. Um, the one that was just recently reprinted into Gideon's spellbook. Sh- um, Shielded by Faith. Yeah, Shield by Faith. Because um, it comes in and then you can equip it to a creature and then whenever a creature comes in, you may equip it. And so you just keep equipping it to the one, one that keeps coming in. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of cards that, that I think can be played with, with this creature. Um, like a card that no one else ever cared about. Um, whip silk for yeah. one green, you can equip a creature and it has reach. Well, it can block a creature as though it had flying. So, so it's not quite, so it reach. doesn't have reach and you can pay a green to return whip silk to its owner's hand. So um, I love free spells. Noy and Dar likes free spells. Um, ones that you can yeah. just like, like uh, view from above. This feels just like view from above because it, it costs green, green to play it and return it to your hand. Yeah. Um, uh, Earthcraft. Someone had mentioned on Twitter, tap an untapped creature you control to untap target basic land. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just bonkers. Um, other cards like um, conviction as well. So conviction has um, it, it's another card where you can equip it to a creature and then pay to return it back to its owner's hand. So it gives a creature plus one plus three and then pay a white to return conviction to its owner's hand. So do you think it'll be difficult to like balance a deck like that between auras and tokens matters, or do you just build it around auras and the tokens are just extra? Or eh, you probably support both. Because, I mean, you're in the right colors to do it, green and white. So you probably could. Yeah. No, I, I'd say you probably want to support both. I'd throw a crusade in there. I'd throw in um, Cather's Crusade as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe even show that that um, force of the force of white. Force, force of, of white. Force of... We can just call it force of force white. Force of white. Force of... So, force of not vigor. So yeah, not vi- vigor is green. Force of not vigilance. Yeah, it's the force of plus one plus one. Force of white MTG. <laughs> oh, that came up with shoes on shoes. Google. <laughs> shoes. Um, <clears throat> I play that. Why not? It only costs three. Force of virtue. Force of virtue. It costs four. Welcome two, to the stage. Two force white, of virtue. Two white white. Two yeah. white white. Yeah, flash creatures you control get plus one plus one. But also the card flicker form. So. Heck enchant yeah. creature and then pay two white white and and then you you just blink it with all of its auras that are currently on it and then return them all to the battlefield i'm so down for that yeah i really want to build this deck because it's it's not only it doesn't it seems fun it seems a little comboy but it seems super fair and budget yeah you could do this super budget. super budget so um you know, thanks everyone on on Twitter for you know chatting about this as well. Um, this was Conviction Gaming that was chatting on Twitter with, mm. or I was chatting with him about this on Twitter. So, um, I appreciate all of that. But we appreciate you. We appreciate you. Yeah, that's the one card that I was looking at before, and then when someone started pointing out all these cards that I remember I used to play with, I was like, oh man, these all work really well. I do yeah. want to play with this a lot more. Yeah, more more now than I did before for sure. Um, and then the other card that I really like is. A card that I don't think a lot of people agree with me on this one, but it's Allure of the Unknown. Okay. Three black and a red. Uh, Sorcery you reveal the top six cards of your library. An opponent uh, exiles a non-land card from among them, and you put the rest into your hand. And then um, that opponent may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. Mm-hmm. You still draw five. It's Rakdos draw five. It- and if you built your deck in a way where you're just forcing them to pull a board wipe, either they're going to run it and they're going to run it out, which you want them to do, mm-hmm. or or they're not. And then you go, cool. I'm just afraid that it's going to pull out like a, 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 an Eldrazi and they can cast it for free. That's okay. That's not okay. It's, it's like, this is on you for putting Eldrazi in your deck. <laughs> That is on them. I know, but they're taking the best one card of the top six. There so, might be a bunch of Eldrazi in there. I'm I'm down for putting this in a group thug deck. It's like, go ahead, cast Havoc Festival. See if I care. I'm fine putting this in just a regular red-black deck. I I would be 
concerned. I'd be cautious about it. I would be. No. Nope. It would be a lot of fun, though. I'm going to throw caution to the wind. <gasps> I'm going to play this. It's going to blow right back in your face. <laughs> I at know. Because I'm going to be downwind from it eventually. Yeah, you're probably right. You do it to someone who doesn't realize how your deck works, and they're like, did you just give me that card? <laughs> Um, so I am actually really happy about the idyllic tutor reprint. I think everyone is. I opened three. Holy crap. And so I, I played, so I, I picked up extra pre-release kits Mm -hmm. and I opened one in the pre-release and then I, we opened two more and then I got a box and when I opened it, I had one in the box four. So that was nice. Really strong. Yeah. And I, I didn't even realize that idyllic tutor went to your hand. I didn't realize that. It's instant speed. Two and a white goes to your hand. And he, an enchantment. An enlightened tutor is the one that puts it on top of the library. Yeah, that's, that's artifact, artifact or enchantment. enchantment. Right. For one white at instant speed. Right. Yeah. I didn't realize that about idyllic. Shows how many idyllic tutors I own. That's zero. I own zero of them. I'm surprised by that. I don't play a ton of enchantment decks. And the ones that I play that I care about enchantments have Zer the Enchanter in it. So it's like, eh, whatever. Yeah, I guess he he gets them for no additional free for no additional <laughs> costs. Um, so I only have a couple more things I wanted to talk about for okay. these cards. Um, Nyx Lotus I think is really cool. Um, you know we don't have we don't have Nykthos Shrine to Nyx in this set, but we have Nyx Lotus a four drop Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. Um, you know you combine that up with your um, with your ancient nyx bloom ancient and now it's just like tapping for a bunch a bunch a bunch a bunch of mana seems good i'm probably going to put it in a few decks maybe it's not the best because it enters tapped and it's at four drop but if you're playing like just ramp deck or something seems fun and i also really like shadow spear the one mana equipment that you can just pay one to remove indestructibility from all of your permanents or your opponent controls <laughs> That just I I feel like even if you're not playing an equipment deck, it would be really nice to just have that as a utility card. It's like oh, remove all your indestructibles. Mm-hmm. Be pretty sweet. I like uh, Shadow of the Sky, our Wrath of God reprint for all intents and purposes. Yeah, except people get to draw cards. Uh, it's only one. If you have a creature with power four or greater, you draw a card. I then thought you, everyone gets to draw a card. Yeah, everybody who controls a creature with power four or greater oh. draws a card. Then you destroy all other creatures. So I, I don't know what they're going to draw that many. And they can be regenerated. <laughs> they can be regenerated <laughs> this time around if you're doing that thing. Yeah. But I would say for all intents and purposes, it's, it's this is not just another Wrath of God that yeah, I think you're right. potentially gives someone the ability to draw a card in in um in white. Well, well, yeah, but no, in I guess. They get to draw a card for you killing the creatures. Oh, no, that's true. Yeah, that that's that's all I was trying to say. Gotcha. Well, I, I like card draw in white. I mean, that's fine with me. Even if the downside is everyone gets to draw cards. I guess that's the kind of the mechanic they were looking at, though. For, yeah. For white card draw. So, I don't know. Seems okay to me. Um, that's That's all the cards that I had that I'm actually, like, really excited to put into, like, a bunch of decks. Like, there's a bunch of niche cards in here. Or niche, sorry. There's a bunch of niche cards in niche. here. Niche. There's a bunch of niche cards in here that I'm probably going to throw in a, in decks. Like Elspeth Conquers Death. Uh, I like that saga um, for my mono white Planeswalker deck that I'm building with Dejiru with eyes wide open as my commander. With eyes wide open. I cannot sing that song. And I don't know why I'm attempting to do it when my voice is gravelly like this. It, Rocky Road voice right now. Ro- Rocky Road <laughs> voice. I don't know what that means. Gravel. Rocky oh. Road. Oh. Yeah. All right. I get it. I made the connection. It's like ice cream now. Well, though. it took me an extra few seconds. That's funny. And you telling me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thassa's Intervention, I think, is going to go in most blue decks. Uh, the opt- Most? You think most? I don't see why not. I mean, it's either a, a counter spell where they have to pay twice X. So it, it could be, or, or it's, or it's, no one's going to want to pay two into that. No one's going to want to pay two into four the, the to pay. Yeah. I mean, you do if it's important enough, but it's just, it's something that's nice to just like have up. It's, 
the the way um there's a three mana counter spell from hour of devastation um that has the second ability where you can go digging with it instead of actually countering a spell but it's like counter the spell unless your opponent pays two i think it's a pretty underplayed card and i actually like it and i like it so much i can't even remember the name of it that's <laughs> that's just how much it's not disallow but disallow was also in that set what what set was this Amonkhet or hour of devastation i think it was hour of devastation and did you did you find it no i oh. didn't uh supreme will oh two and a blue uh instant speed choose one counter target spell unless controller pays three or look at the top four cards of your library put one of them into your hand the rest in the bottom of your library in any order i was played a lot during standard it, it was during standard i play it in in edh a lot um just because it's like it's not a it's not a super great counter spell but the fact that you have a choice i like the utility cards like that um and i feel like nissa or uh Thassa's Intervention is going to be another one of those utility cards. I know I'm going to play it. I guess we'll see how much other people play it. We talked about Nylea's Intervention too. Search for any lands, put them in your hand. They do go in your hand, not on the on the battlefield, but that just means the card's fair. Um, and I don't know if you want to talk about Thassa's Oracle, but we could. We talked about it a little bit. You could go on Twitter and see what people are ranting Thassa's, I'd say ranting and raving. It's mostly just ranting. Thassa's Oracle really is as strong as people are saying it is, though. I, I get it. It's really good. It's good because it's part of a combo, though. It's not If That's you're playing true. it fairly, it's not as broken as people it, are. It's, it is cool, though, because it's a, another win con. It's an alternate win condition Yeah. in blue Uh huh. that even if you're not playing it to win, it does stuff, which other alternate win conditions don't really have that, which is kind of... I'm other than Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. He does have that. Which, by the way, Jace, Wielder of Mysteries with Thassa's Oracle is really good because that's five devotion to blue right away. And then you have like two different win cons. I think people are mostly upset that, you know, Laboratory Maniac has always been the, the combo win con card. And it's even the combo win for the Flash Hulk piles that people are complaining about right now. Um, and Thassa's Oracle is an easier way to do it than laboratory maniac they made it mm -hmm. easier i understand it's only going to affect cdh people competitive edh um i'm going to play it in fair decks though too and by fair i mean i'm upgrading jorian and it's not going to be fair anymore yeah but you're not playing flash hulk in there so we appreciate that's that. true that's so. true i own flash hulk and i don't have it in the deck have you ever actually done it no i bought it to do it and then i decided to build Kess instead because it seemed better and less land intensive, more consistent with the mana base. Hmm. So I know nothing about this. It's fun. It's all foreign to me. Ah, I want to play some CDH so bad. <laughs> if you want to play CDH, hit me up. Yeah. If you want to play like over Skype or something, hit me up. We'll play. Um. So yeah, I think I think that's it. I don't know if there are any other cards that you wanted to talk about. No, I think those are the top ones, and, and I have a few more that I added to the Commander of the Week deck that I'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Okay, two weeks ago, we talked about this. We were talking about things we wanted. Is it for... bad that I don't remember this even remotely? That's what I remember. I have <laughs> good memory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually have good memory. This is surprising. Only magic is what I'm good with. Memory. Okay. Um, so two weeks ago, um, you challenged me to put a list of planeswalkers together uh, as commanders that I think I would, would be problematic. Okay. And I have commanders. not seen this list. It's just so everyone knows he put this list together. So I am finding out as you all find out. Yes. Now I'll, I'll be honest. I thought I was going to find a lot more worse commanders than I did. Okay. Um, or worse planeswalkers as commanders than I did. There are some that I think should be discussed or talked about, um, but maybe, you know, maybe they wouldn't be problems. A majority of them uh, were issues because of the cards doubling season and deep close gate, allowing them to ultimate the turn that they came out. So did you keep that in mind, those two cards in mind with these? I did. Some of them do not require this and are just problems. Uh, and I think we would agree at least on one of them, and that's um, the mono blue Tezzeret. 
The Seeker. The Seeker. And he will allow you to search for any artifact that you minus X him for, which he comes in with four loyalty counters right away, so you can immediately go find Chain Veil. So if you like high tide with him out or something, you can go find Chain Veil, recast him, and then just kind of start going off with him. So it's like the 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 two the two card combinations are really uh, what I tried to focus on. Okay. And I would like to go from low CMC to high CMC because my first one is definitely one I didn't think would would be that much of a problem, but I think it kind of is. And that is for one a white and a white Gideon of the Trials from Amonkhet for three loyalty. You can plus one until your next turn prevent all damage target permanent would deal. Zero until end of turn Gideon of the Trials becomes a 4-4 human soldier creature with indestructible that's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. And the problem part that I feel, zero, you get an emblem with as long as you control a Gideon planeswalker, you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. So as long as your commander sticks, you can't lose. Right, but they could get rid of it, right? They can, and then you can just recast it. Not if they don't kill you. It, they have to kill you and your Planeswalker pretty much in the same round. Yeah, they'd have to get rid of the Planes... Well, but that's totally possible, right? It's possible, but... So when when the Rules Committee is looking at banning cards, as we saw with the ban of Paradox Engine, mm-hmm. it was more about... And, and I guess Iona uh, getting banned at the same time Painter's, Painter's Servant got unbanned. It was more about making an unenjoyable experience for people. And I I think a Gideon where no one else can win and I can't lose until you take care of this and I can recast it every single turn because no matter where it goes, I can just put it into my command zone could be an issue. I don't know if it is, okay, but it's on the list. Okay. Planeswalker number two, uh-huh. one of your favorites. For one, a blue and a blue. It's an R set part of Veils. Yeah, well, I just I wouldn't want that, and that wouldn't make a good commander, though. No, I mean, it it, at first it... I wouldn't want it as a commander, like to be playing against. Sure. But also, I just it's not a good commander. No, it it would just make the game miserable. And you do have to get rid of it every time. Yeah, if they have enough mana to go Narset Wheel, it's like great. Yeah, Thanks. this is a real fun game. Exactly. Yeah. Nope, I agree, hundred percent. Okay. Um. Sahili Sublime Artificer. One hybrid blue-red, hybrid blue-red. I just think this card could be really, really, really bonkers uh, as the commander if you can just recast it and turn your artifacts or turn your servos into other artifacts and create a giant swarm of them. I think it could be a lot of fun, um, but I don't know if it, if it would be inherently broken. It's not banned in Oathbreaker, so maybe it's not. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Are there many cards banned in Oathbreaker? Not a ton, but there's some. And it just takes one person to break it. To, the other to bring the, light. That's true to the to the issue, right? The commander deck Sahili is banned in Oathbreaker. The commander. Oh, that this. Um, yeah, the the. Yeah, and I actually didn't include her on this list because if it's banned in Oathbreaker, it's probably going to be a problem in commander although you don't get the you don't get the signature spell but it could be an issue sahili the gifted you're sahili talking about. the gifted um so yeah so i had that on the list um i don't know that's that one's probably low on the lookout for it scale but would be one of my first ones i'd build because it seems like a lot of fun to build um next on the list is for two, a blue, and a blue, Jace, Architect of Thought. And this is only out there because of the implication of a deep glow skate allowing you to emblem him right away, or ultimate him right away. So uh, for minus eight, for each player, search that player's library for a non-land card and exile it. Then that player shuffles as her library. You may cast those cards without paying their mana cost. So you could go and find everyone's win condition right away. And it's kind of a two-card combo with one of those cards being in your command zone to try to win, but it only works against players that actually run these win conditions. So this one might also not be that big of a problem. In what the right what, what card are you thinking is just the win con? It depends what deck people are playing. 
I mean, if you're grabbing an expropriate from somebody, that'd be real sad. Yeah. You grab someone's... For exp- everyone. You grab one person's omniscience, you grab one person's expropriate, Ooh. and you grab the last person's... I don't know. Sorry. Well, my eyes are lighting up right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I just think getting to free cast that might be a problem. And in blue, you can blink, so you might be able to even do it multiple times and blink your deep glow skate, and it could end up being a problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can see that argument. Uh, next, another Jace, the Living Guild pack. Really, that card's not great, is it? Um, it's right, I need the... to look this one up again because okay. I haven't played with this card since. Was this M fifteen? Uh, M fifteen. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So it comes in with five. So with the deep close gate, you can put him up to ten and minus eight him right away. So he has a plus one. Uh, look at the top two cards of your library. Put one into your graveyard. Mm-hmm. Uh, minus three. Return another target non-land permanent to its owner's hand both things very fair and then minus eight each player shuffles their hand shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into their library and then you draw seven yeah so this is i ran this card in narset not this there's a card that does this each player just shuffles their hand into their library and then they don't get to draw anymore. No, cards. and it's so uh, mean. You're right. And that's why I took that whole deck apart because it was mean. But yes, this is pretty mean. Yes. Yeah, so that's why that one was included. Um, it's you know it's really bad, but I I have two more Jaces on this list too. Really? Okay. Okay. So one one of them is Jace Wielder of Mysteries, just because I feel like having an alternate win condition in your command zone is really strong. That's the counter spell. Uh, Jace Wielder of Mysteries is the Laboratory Maniac. Oh, you're right. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but if you want to skip to Jason Reveler of Secrets, yes. that one, there is a legendary creature that does this. <laughs> uh, one of the flip legendaries. Uh, if you cast, if, a, if, if the spell is the fourth spell cast this turn, you flip it, and then it becomes an enchantment that says counter the first spell um, that an opponent would cast this turn. So that is banned in Commander already. So Jason Reveler of Secrets probably also going to get it would would fall under the same category of getting banned. You know, it's just as easy to turn it on as that other one. Well, assuming you have Deep Glow Skate or Doubling Season, uh, or not yeah. Doubling. Se- <clears throat> well, I mean, it's blue, so you you you're stuck with Deep Glow Skate or like uh, three proliferates. Okay. So yes, it is. Uh, I mean, the other one you would have to cast four spells all in one turn, so it, it's not hard but not easy to turn it on i guess i don't know okay uh i have karn the great creator on here okay because mycosynth locks are bad but there's no wish board there is no wish board so you'd have to just find it or mm-hmm. or get it so I maybe don't it would disagree be difficult. that i don't disagree okay um narset transcendent really yeah all right all right let, let's look up nice at transcendent again i didn't realize that this com- <laughs> that this planeswalker started with six loyalty for four mana yeah i forgot that she even has a minus nine yeah that's a really good no one, one ever uses it though you they only should. really ever, you really only ever use the plus one like two times and then she's killed before oh yeah because you have to kill her i guess so we're speaking emblems or, or ultimates only yes. really here so Pretty she much. has um your em- you get an emblem with your opponents can't cast non-creature spells yep for minus nine so i mean you play blue white control and then just search for your deep glow skate and then just do that or just blue white control and get there it can still get you with creatures yeah as long as you don't have enough pillow fort up to for they can't attack you and that's the thing about narset is you just kill it and then they can just recast it okay all right all right (laughs) All right, I All see right. it. This one is a very controversial opinion. Samut the Tested for two, a red, and a green. Who, who, who is, <laughs> who's arguing this? You against I'm, you? I'm arguing this against myself. Okay, okay. So you can doubling season with Samut to get her <laughs> ultimate right away. To search your library for up to two creatures and or Planeswalker cards, put them on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. This isn't any worse than a tooth and nail. And you just search for two creatures and put them on the battlefield. But you can do it with Planeswalkers, too. I don't know what you're doing in Gruul for Planeswalkers to get two of them. But I just, again, this is just like a list of high points, talk about. Maybe that one isn't broken and just would be a lot of fun. But you could do it multiple times, too. You want to talk about Tamiyo Field Researcher? 
I know. Okay, I know she's a problem. You know, this is the one planeswalker on my list that can play both <laughs> deep glow skate and doubling season. You know, even without those cards, I've gotten to ultimate her. Uh huh. And it's it's rough. And imagine her being in the the command zone. So exactly. for four mana, one green, white, and a blue. She starts with four loyalty, plus one. Uh, choose up to two target creatures until your next turn. Whenever either of those creatures deals combat damage, you draw a card. Minus two, tap two target non-land permanents. They don't untap during their controller's next untap step. Or minus seven, draw three cards, and then you get an emblem that is omniscience. Yeah. So you may cast non-land cards from your hand without paying their mana costs. That's right. So you still have to pay mana for Tamiyo if you want to cast her again. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's but, it. But I can tell you... No one likes Tamio Field Researcher. Nope. From my experience in casting her mm -hmm. and then playing a Deep Blue Skate. Yeah. The game's over. Over, probably. Like It's likely. Yeah, if it's not. Because this is an omniscience that you can't remove. Hopefully the game is over that turn. And you don't have to wait through it. But if you're playing Super Friends, it's not. It's not. It's but it's not. usually over and like, you, the, the you can see turn. the writing on the wall. Yeah, then it's like, okay, scoop. <laughs> um, wait, how many more? I actually have a bunch, but I'll skip through some of them that are like less. Strong. If you have notes on this too, we can post it online. Uh, I can. Or you can put together notes. a list. Yeah, I can put together a list. Yeah. And I can I could make different ratings of how much problems they are. Okay. Nickel Boss Dragon God. He yeah, goes that's, on the a, that's problem a problem because he's a win condition in your in your. Yeah, because his ultimate is if you don't control a legendary permanent, you lose the game. A creature or a planeswalker. Legendary creature or planeswalker, so not even like a legendary land. Correct. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I would have been so proud of playing some legendary land. You're like, you still lose. Mm -hmm. Oops. <laughs> Um, this one is one that I was surprised to see, but I think it, it, it would be a problem. Nissa, who shakes the world. Shaking the world. Yeah, with a doubling season down, you search for Shake all of your off. forests. Shake it off. Just throw them, just throw them on the battlefield. Um. Every single land in your deck. And they all tap for double. Green, and they tap for double. And every time you draw a card, it's not a land. That is... Well, she searches for forests. She's, yeah, and but if she's your commander, you'd be playing mono green. And if she's your commander, you probably don't want to play non forests. I probably still play some non forests. Which ones? Mosswort Bridge. Okay. You might top deck a land. I might top deck a land. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have Sarkhan on Broken on here. Yeah. Also can play doubling season and deep close gate. Yeah. And his minus eight says, search your library for any number of dragon creature cards and put them on the battlefield and shuffle your library. And then he could probably just win, which is fine. It's I would still like, a two-card combo. I would like to see that happen. You sort of see just a, all the dragons. Yes. And then one of them says that all dragons you control have haste. Yeah. There's got to be one. There's probably one. Or other creatures you control have haste or... There's something, something has like haste. That. There's got to be something to give them haste. There's extra combats. Well, that doesn't mean they have haste. No, but that means the ones that do have haste can swing multiple times. Yes. I think Teferi Hero of Dominaria should be banned from all formats because he's a terrible planeswalker and I hate him. All right, great argument. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his emblem is when, um, whenever you draw a card, exile target permanent and opponent controls. You know, it's very slow. It It is, unless you play like Blue Sun Zenith for X equals 10 and be like, okay, exile. That, but that, that, no, that, no, no, that, slow that, is that, in. That. You still have to get to the ultimate. It, true, unless you deep close skate and then get it right away. Okay. I say these are, these are, <laughs> I'm thinking about these from this two card. All right. You're right. You're right. I have to keep remembering that you have that in the background. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go with one that doesn't have that, that deep close skate or doubling season perspectives. Uh, Mono Black Sword Markov. Yeah, your life is 10. Yeah, three black, black, black. Uh, it starts with four loyalty, minus three. Target opponent's life total becomes 10. If you have enough mana to just like recast him three times, it's it's going to be a problem. Um, Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge, look him up. 
he's Logan recent. Roy, he's fairly new. He's fairly recent, but yeah, he he deals damage to equal to, to your opponents, and you gain life equal to the number of artifacts you have. Yeah, out. And then I would just love to see uh, Ugin the Spirit Dragon. And, Ooh, Eugene and, and Vraska Relic Seeker. Vraska Relic Seeker. Oh, because she makes minus ten. Target opponent's life total becomes one. One. Yeah. I mean, I still like the unseen more because she makes one one assassins that just kill but person. At, but at least you can kill those assassins. You can, but you can kill the planeswalker too. You can kill the planeswalker. That's true. What you can do in all of in these all cases of these. before you can, you can kill Deep the Ghost planeswalkers. Gate comes out, I think planeswalkers should be legal as commander, and then we can figure it out later. I've shown you my arguments. Wait, they could do it. They could do it just like they did for that like two weeks when the uncommanders were legal. It was totally fine. I didn't enjoy it. That's my own personal What'd you feeling. do? You played like two games. I did, and I didn't enjoy it because people were bringing out all these cards, and I'm like, I don't know what to do with this card. you didn't know what they card. were. I was like, what is this thing? I'll kill it. And then people were like, oh, you're killing the guy with all the uncards. Let's all gang up on you. I'm like, I don't know what his deck's going to do. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, you know, what does everyone else think? D- tweet at us yeah. or send us an email. Do you think Planeswalker should be legal as commander? I'm interested to hear what you say. We've we've seen a lot online. People have made a lot of videos about this. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's no right answer. And there's no wrong answer. Um, so we're interested to hear what you think. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you think. You want to open some mail? Heck yeah, I want to open some mail. I, I picked up the mail the other day and I, I tweet or I, I did not tweet you. I texted you. You did text me. And I said, we got mail and then I want to open it. You're like, let's wait till the episode to open the mail. I was so disappointed. It's usually the complete opposite. Whenever I have packs, I cannot keep them sealed. You can't keep anything sealed? I can't keep my packs sealed. You can't ever. keep your packs sealed? Yeah, no, I have to open my packs. I always have to open my packs. Um. Oh wait, I have. Um. You have sealed boxes. I do. Thrown I, I don't. Drain. I don't understand how you do that. How do you not just open everything? Um. Willpower. The only sealed product I have at my house are precons, where I know everything that's already in them. Yeah, I have Throne of Eldraine. I have one box of Ravnica Allegiance you that did? we got at uh, Command Fest Chicago. Yeah. Chicago, where I picked up twenty packs of cons and opened them all there. <laughs> did you get um one fetch, windswept teeth? You did get a fetch. Yeah, the least one. Oh, <gasps> the least one. <gasps> we got some packs that we can do pick one pack ones. That's and awesome. A foil guardian project. Ooh, foil donated very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, this was this was sent to us by um, Cube Draft. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, which pack do we want to open for this? Which ones are there? Okay, so we have Guild of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, War of the Spark, and Throne of Eldrain. Pick one at random. I don't know how you do that. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna separate these into two. Two piles of two. Two piles of two. And, and then we're going to eliminate one of them. Okay. And then I'm going to do that, and then you're just going to pick one. All right, left or right? Uh, Right. Okay. So we're now looking at Guilds of Ravnica or the Spark. Okay. Okay. All right. oh, and, and, okay, mm-hmm. pick right or left. Right again. We're going to open War of the Spark. It's like one of my favorite sets. It's one of your favorite sets? Yeah. Okay. Planeswalker in every pack. Planeswalker in every pack. Should are we open pa- it as close are to we, the microphone Are we as ASMRing pack opening right now? <laughs> <laughs> no. Not at all. Okay. All right. I'm at the end of my, my rope here. Are we forcing any colors in this draft right now? Immediately before opening packs. Yeah. If it's an Ugin, you pick Ugin. You force colorless. Okay. Got it. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we've got a stealth mission. Two and a blue. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. That creature can't be blocked this turn. Mm-hmm. Honor the God Pharaoh. As an additional cost uh, to cast the spell, discard a card. Draw two cards and amass one for two and a red. Okay. Rising Populous, two and a white. Whenever another creature or planeswalker you control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Rising Populous. Mm-hmm. 
Steady aim, one and a green. Untap target creature. It gets plus one, plus four, and gains reach until end of turn. Okay. Aid the fallen, one and a black. Choose one or both. Return target creature from your graveyard to your hand, or return target planeswalker from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. Trusted Pegasus, two and a white, uh, flying whenever Trusted Pegasus attacks. Uh, target attacking creature without flying gains flying until end of turn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Band together, two and a green. There's a lot of two and a color in this pack. Hmm. Almost almost all the cards were except Steady Aim and Aid the Fallen. Okay, okay. Um, two and a green, up to two target creatures you control each deal damage equal to their power to another creature. Okay. Spell Gorger Weird, two and a red. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Spell Gorger Weird. Okay, okay. Two, two. Arboreal Grazer, zero, three, with reach for a single green. When it enters the battlefield, put a land from your hand onto the battlefield tap. Great card. Great card. Huatli's Raptor uh, for a green and white Vigilance, uh, two, three. Uh, when Huatli's Raptor enters the battlefield, you populate. Okay. That's War of the Spark. So, I okay. mean, you know, you're going to have a Planeswalker, likely. <gasps> Dovin's Veto. Oh, gross. Do I love Dovin's Veto. Gross. For white and a blue, the spell can't be countered. Counter target non creature spell. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, we have an uncommon Planeswalker. Ooh. Samut Tyrant Smasher. Uh, five loyalty. Creatures you control have haste. Minus one. Target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains haste until end of turn. Scry one. Mm hmm. People were very confused about why that minus one said this creature gains haste. And it's because if that minus one happens to kill some moot, kill some moot uh-huh. that creature still can swing. Yep. All right. Our foil, Silent Submersible. Our foil or our rare? Our rare, okay. not our foil. Silent Submersible. When Silent Submersible deals combat damage to a player or Planeswalker draw a card, crew two. I don't want that card. <laughs> All right. Well, we have, we have a foil. We have a foil. Samut Sprint. Ooh. Uh, target creature gets plus two plus one and gains haste until end of turn. Scry one. That's a bomb and feather. This is a bomb and feather. <laughs> um, we got an island. Okay. And then a zombie army token. Ooh. All right. So what are we what are we gonna pick here? I have I have my idea of my top two cards in that pack. All right. So I I mean I'm thinking I, I do like I do like going for planeswalkers. Yeah. Samut Samut's fun. Super strong. I like Watley's Raptor. I don't think Quatley's Raptor is a bad choice. But I also like Spellgorger weird. Okay. Um, you can potentially get spells later. Hmm. No. I'm probably gonna pick either Quatley's Raptor or Samut. I'm I'm probably leaning Samut, but I'm also thinking about that Pegasus. Pegasus is good. Mm-hmm. The Pegasus, you know, you you can never go wrong with flying. Flying that gives your other stuff flying. But I think the hastiness and the extra stuff on Samut might be the answer that we're looking for. Samut. I think so. All right, we're we're gonna we're gonna pick Samut here. Pack one, pick one. Pack one, pick one, Samut. We'll post pictures of this later. And then we will put this into a group and we'll do a giveaway. Absolutely. At the end of the month. This month, maybe next month. Once we're done opening these month, packs, how much month is how left? Much, how much month is left? <laughs> nine, nine, ten days this month. In left. four episodes from now, we'll do a giveaway. Woo! So we open these. Thank you yes. so much. This is fun. Thank you. I do like doing these. I also just like opening packs. Opening, cards. opening packs are amazing. You know who who doesn't do like opening packs cards all the time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want to send us your packs to open we'll take them <laughs> we'll take them and then we'll we'll do shout outs and then we'll put them into the giveaway yeah yeah we won't since it's two of us and we don't want to fight over anything <laughs> we'll uh, the the only logical thing to do is to give them back to you guys the community the community the the fans of the show who make it all happen yeah and then we're going to i think you mentioned it already we're going to sign that copy of guardian project yes we're going to sign this copy of guardian project and send it back i just have to get um ryan and brian ryan and brian ryan and brian together and all four of us will sign it and we'll send this back um i'm very excited and it's foily the best kind of card i don't prefer it (laughs) i i prefer it (laughs) i I prefer it i prefer it it's great it's great um all right. We have one final segment. One final one, one final segment and it is Commander of the Week. All right. And um I just recently added some stuff to my Esther the Mask 
deck. So mm-hmm. um, it seemed appropriate after the Theros Beyond Death set came out that I update my enchantment commander. Seems right. Which was interesting to see once I finally put it onto Architect, how the breakdown of my deck actually worked out. Because I I usually just I look at the um the color spread and I look at the I guess CMC for the most part sure. when I, when I'm building a deck, but I don't necessarily look at the number of I don't always look at the number of creatures versus enchantments versus artifacts. I don't, right. I don't always necessarily take that into account, but I, re- I realize now that with the, um, the way that I built this, I have 40 enchantments. That's, that's an enchantment deck right it's a, there. It's a lot of enchantments. <laughs> so, um, if you're looking for an enchantment deck, um, this is a very good commander for that. For sure. Um, whose ultimate is the card replenish. So, um, replenish is a sorcery and replenish costs three and a white and says return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to play well estrid basically has that and it says put the top seven cards of your library into your graveyard then return all non-aura enchantments from your graveyard to the battlefield then do the same for auras so you're returning them all but you're able to return the non-auras first so that you can equip you can put the auras back on anything that came in before it yeah um but we just got another Planeswalker, Calyx Destiny's Hand. Sure did. That has a minus seven of return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we now have three versions of Replenish, and um, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, Do you run doubling season in that deck? I don't. I actually don't. Okay. No. Um it's not a bad choice. I, I was just thinking like, it probably doesn't do a whole ton other than your commander, but it is an enchantment. So I guess it kind of might do something for like some of your creatures that make you, so you can draw cards. But now this is, I mean, I guess you put one more planeswalker in there. I don't know if that, is that the, is that the pushing point to finally have enough planeswalkers for you to play doubling season? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't really have any creatures that care about counters either though. Right. So I would say no. If you have it, it doesn't hurt to have it because I guess sure. you can ultimate Estrid immediately. No, you can't. No. No. She it's a minus seven. She comes in at three. But she does have okay. a plus two, so you would plus four then. Yeah. So she'd be able to next turn. Mm-hmm. But she can generally She'll get there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. She's generally okay on her own without needing mm-hmm. doubling season. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did add some new cards. So um Calyx just got added, but um some cards that I think are going to help this deck a bit are uh Satessan Champion, so as constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on Satessan Champion and draw a card. So it has a lot of the enchantress effects. So um you draw a card whenever an enchantment comes into play. Um, I added Archon of Sun's Grace, Flying Lifelink 3 4 for two white, white. Pegasus creatures you control have lifelink. Uh, Constellation, whenever uh, an enchantment enters the battlefield, you create a 2 2 Pegasus with flying. Hmm. Um, and then the, the last new card is Arasta of the Endless Web. It is an enchantment creature for two green, green for a 3 5 reach legendary enchantment creature spider. Um, spider. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or a sorcery, create a one, two green spider creature token with reach. Mm-hmm. I don't know how relevant that's going to be, but it's an enchantment itself. And since I have a lot of cards that help me draw cards when an enchantment comes into play. Sure. sure. Um, Do the tokens count as enchantments as well? Mm, no, I don't believe so. Oh, okay. No, I think it would actually say you make an enchantment, enchantment. creature token. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So... Um, here we run, uh, our, I run Mesa Enchantress. Whenever you play an enchantment spell, you can draw a card, uh, our Gothian Enchantress. Um, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, uh, you draw a card. Uh, this one also has shroud, um, Ver- uh, Yavimaya Enchantress and Verderin Enchantress. So we have lots of draw spells, yep. um, or permanents, um, Seder Enchanter. I I'm running spark double now. Um, okay. I updated okay. that after War of the Spark. Um, and now that we have 
two planeswalkers that I could come in as a copy of that, you know, instead of just a creature. Sure. But I like drawing cards, I think. So Yeah, so um it's okay to come in as a creature. Yeah. An- another card that was added from Throne of Eldraine was Dance of the Mance. Dance of the Mance. Yeah, white blue. So we're return up to X Target artifacts and or non aura enchantments. Um with CMC X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh if X is six or more, they um you return those permanents and they become four or four creatures in addition to their other types. Okay. It's just a nice way to bring back something that they removed, yeah. someone removed from you. Um, so then um, I just have a lot. So I built mine so that I enchant my lands so that right. I can untap them. So Estrid has a plus two of untap each non-land or uh, untap each enchanted permanent you control. Mm-hmm. So if you enchant one of your lands with an aura and you plus two on Estrid, it untaps your lands. Estrid also has a minus one of, cre- of, of create a one a white aura enchantment named mask and attach it to another target permanent. So you can do this on your lands as well. Um, and it says it, it gives it totem armor. So if that permanent would be destroyed instead, destroy the totem armor. Right. Now, um, if, if that permanent and the totem armor would be destroyed at the same time, it instead only destroys the totem armor. Yeah. It's really great. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so you just, I mean, I, I've played against this deck a few times. It can be miserable at times, uh, but you just produce so much mana out of it. It's with enchanting all of your lands. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, you you can generally play any any card that's in your hand, and I think the problem is it just needs more and more and more card draw. Yeah, but the win cons here are, I mean, the chain veil is in there because it does go infinite with Estrid because. Um, the chain veil says pay four for each planeswalker you control. You can activate its loyalty abilities one more than one time this turn. Mm-hmm. Um, so what you do is you have Astrid out and you have the chain veil out. Yep. You put a mask on the chain veil. Mm-hmm. So it's enchanted and then you pay four and you tap it and then you can use one of Astrid's abilities one more time. So you plus Astrid and you untap each enchanted permanent you control. So that untaps all your lands. It also untaps the chain veil. You pay four on the chain veil again, meaning you can use Astrid's ability again. Yep. And so what you do is you just keep plussing to make essentially almost infinite. It's not infinite. You can make infinite mana. As you can make you have... infinite mana. Yeah. But um, you can minus seven multiple times. So you um mill seven and then put all of your enchantments from your graveyard onto the battlefield. Mm. So you're able to just get everything from your deck out onto the battlefield. Right. Um, and the deck itself doesn't have a ton of win cons. So that's why it seems very slow. Mm -hmm. Um, but as far as win cons go, um, things like Luminarch Ascension, um, to make four, four angels, um, for one and a white, once you have, that online yep. it says at the beginning of each opponent's end step if you did if if you didn't lose life this turn you put a quest counter on it and then you can activate um the one in a white to create a four four angel if there's four quest counters on this mm-hmm. um that's that's one of the win cons um heliod god of the sun makes uh two one white cleric enchantment creature tokens with with mana um Sigil of the Empty Throne is another win con. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you create a 4 4 angel. Starfield of Nyx, your um, non aura enchantments become creatures mm-hmm. equal, with power and toughness equal to the CMC of this card. Um, so those those really are those are the win cons. Yep. Um, but we'll see how these the new cards work out. I'm, I'm thinking Archon of Sun's Grace could actually do some work now. Give me some two two flyers that can actually do some work. Gotcha. As opposed to just waiting for like three cards to happen. Did you take your blue cumulative upkeep enchantment that makes it so that I can't untap out of that deck, or is it still in? There? Are you talking about energy flux? Yeah, that one. That one only cares about artifacts. Oh, it's only artifacts can't untap. No, it's all artifacts gain during your upkeep. They have cumulative. That's not the one I'm talking two. about. There's the blue enchantment that says it has a cumulative upkeep. And I think it's opponents skip their untap step or something like that. Stasis. Stasis. Yeah, that's not in here. You took it out? Yes. Thank you. No, that that that's a miserable card. And <laughs> I don't want to be playing like that. Um but I did I did leave overburden in. 
Okay. So whenever a player puts a creature into play, they return a land they control to their hand. You mm-hmm. do need a little upper hand here. You are playing a much slower deck in most cases than everyone else. Sure. And you're not playing a ton of creatures. This deck itself only has 12. Yeah. Uh, 13. 14. 15. It has more. The way that Archidec has this right now, it has some as enchantments, some of them as creatures, Yep. and then some are, yeah, the way that I've shifted things around. Yeah, when I built my Morophon deck, I kept going like, where is this other creature Chromanticore was hiding in the enchantment section? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think Heliar God of the Sun is one of the only cards that I haven't won with, Mm. and I, I probably could just do that more more often because other creatures you control at vigilance and then you just pay four to make a white a two one white creature token Mm -hmm. so if you have infinite mana yeah yeah. but in that case you want to do the fun thing which is mill everything and put it all back in but i should just do the hell yeah thing you you probably do both if you're putting them all back in and they're there no as long as you're not i'll just (laughs) say oh we scoop we scoop yeah that's correct but i'm gonna say that i won through hell yeah (laughs) All right, you can win some hell yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to post a list for this um, yeah. tomorrow um, or tonight. Or tonight. Whenever Either this one. goes live. Yeah, whenever Probably. that happens. We're recording a day early this we, week. We are. We're recording on Tuesday, so I'll have it posted tomorrow. Um, I think that's it for this week. That's all we got. That's it. Woo! I hope you are recovered from your flu. I know. We're almost there. We're on the medicine. You had a chimney sweep come and clean you out. (laughs) Because, you know, chimney flues. Oh. That was just a really stretch of a pun there. You sure stretched it. (laughs) Yeah, we stretched it. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, well, um, I'm, I'm much better now. I, I have had this for about four days and I don't feel like, um, death anymore that's good so yeah i'm crossing my fingers i don't get it i know <laughs> producer ryan's sicker than a dog as well and so he texted us and said oh you guys i don't know about tonight and i said well i'm on antibiotics and i've got all this other stuff going on so i'm good and coil goes i'm gonna risk it i guess yeah might okay. as well that's commitment <laughs> <laughs> it's like we 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 prepped for this week and i don't want to wait any longer let's just do it uh, all right well I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we have anything else to talk about. Yeah. So um, as always, we want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, If you want to contact us, you can head to guardianprojectpodcast.com. You can find me at ATFlory. You can find me at mp coil mtg on twitter on twitter um also take a look for hashtag guardian project pod to find our posts and episodes uh we like to hear from you so send along your comments and any topics you'd like us to talk about and we'll go over those on the next episode um and that's it thanks see you next week bye-bye at the normal time again finally yeah, i mean you'll you'll watch us at the normal time or listen to us at the normal time either way we'll just finally record it on a wednesday again yeah, which will be interesting it'll be nice it doesn't really matter for me honestly i mean it's like a routine you know? i know Routines i like are nice. i like recording on wednesdays wednesdays are good days to record it's the only thing that i do on wednesday that's surprising Look forward to record well i mean i work Happy hump day i i still work yeah i know isn't that the worst? That's <laughs> not what I look forward to every Wednesday. Wednesday at lunchtime. Oh, I got to get my intro. Got to get my intro. <laughs> now we have to walk to the computer and notice that we didn't hit the record button the whole time.